Bruce Lavelle is joining me. He is a senior campaign advisor to former President Trump, former executive director of the National Diversity Coalition for Trump, and a small business advocate for, for the White House. Uh, you can find him on X on Twitter at Bruce underscore Lavelle. Bruce, it's great to have you back on the Scott Sand Show. Always a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Uh, last night, I don't know if you listened to any of Kamala Harris' uh, pandering, uh, the, the best word I can think of it, on, on Charlemagne the God's show uh, in Detroit yesterday on our iHeartRadio sister stations. Were you able to listen to any of that? Yeah, I, I, some of the clips, because I busy day yesterday. We had a Harris Faulkner town hall with President Trump, and right after that, we were at the Cobb Galleria for a rally, so it was a really busy day in Atlanta, Georgia, but I did see some of the, the, the sound bites, the softballs that Charlemagne throws at her, you know, and holds her by the hand. Yeah, I, I was. I like Charlemagne. I, I think he's a very talented personality, and and normally he's pretty. He can be pretty caustic and, and yeah. call, call people out. He'll, 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 he'll throw the BS flag, but he he did not last night, and and threw her as you said some softball questions. Yeah, and, and some of the things that we've seen out of the Harris campaign in the last week, uh, she seems somewhat desperate uh, going after the black vote. Uh, her her level of support among black voters is at historic lows for Democrats. Yeah, it's actually going to get worse uh, as time goes on. I think, uh, thank God, uh, I call it the Great Awakening. Um, you know, President Trump started it. And let's just be honest, in 2015, you know, look around, look what you've been voting for. Look who's been in charge for 30, 40, 50, 60 years. Are you happy what you see? Uh, if you're not, then vote for me. After all, what the hell do you have to lose? Quote. And, you know, that you know, obviously resurrected a, a, a voice that started echoing across the nation and created a, a war against the, an establishment, you know, should I say society that's historically encapsulated black culture for years in the voting block. So it's been penetrated. So it's a good thing. I actually think that's a line he should bring back. I haven't heard him use it on this campaign uh, this year yet. But yeah, well, what the hell right. do I have to lose? Uh, I would, yeah. uh, you, you worked with the Small Business Administration. One of the things that Kamala Harris has proposed is one million forgivable loans, which, by the way, is not really a loan. If you don't have to pay it back, that's, that's not actually a loan. <laughs> it's, 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 it's just another handout, uh, which she promises to black entrepreneurs. And look, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all about uh, people being able to have the opportunity mm -hmm. to start their own business and succeed and thrive. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that seems it seems pretty narrowly focused and 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 not at the broader society where where I think we would all like the opportunity to to become an entrepreneur. Well, first of all, everyone knows we have sense enough and just you know it, it's illegal what she's talking about anyway. Number one, to take a, take a particular culture and society and say that this this tax money that we're taking from everyone is going to go to this group based on their color. So we already know that that's not going to go anywhere. So, and I think a lot of respectfully as me, I'm a business owner for 29 years. I did take a leave from my company to go serve for the president for the entire Southeast of the United States, which, you know, is the most culturally diverse uh, area of the U S that we have, you know, Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, Kentucky, North Carolina, South Carolina, of course, Florida, um, very multicultural. So, you know, w <laughs> listen, we, we know that it's not legal. We're not stupid. And, uh, you know, only thing we're, we're asking for is, uh, you know, you saw uh, my brother Charles Payne go off and gone viral when he was with uh, talking to uh, Dana on, uh, you know, I don't know, you, I, I, you should watch that. It's pretty good. Actually, he goes off about this, about Kamala on the pandering. And especially when she brought up the, oh, and, and then the weed. You know, like like right. all the brothers smoke weed. Yeah, you want you you want you want a handout, and you want free legalized weed. And look, I am I am I am personally in favor. I, I'm I'm not I'm not getting high every day, but I'm personally in favor of of decriminalizing and legalizing marijuana. And I, I think I, right I, I, right I, agree. I, and I, I think that's a, an issue that Republicans should make bipartisan. But. But it does seem, yeah. it, it seems stereotyping to say, here's some free money and, and here's some uh, free legal weed. Uh, I mean, that, that's, <laughs> what, look, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an old white guy and even I'm saying, whoa, man, this, what, what are you doing? So that, that, that is an example of the disconnection. 
and you you would have to scratch your head. Okay, which consultant? Which advisor gave you and wrote that? Because I know she didn't write that. <laughs> okay, well, she didn't write those, you know, but it is desperation, uh, you know, and listen, um, once again, this is, Look, a, this uh, is Bruce, a continuation. I'm going, to, I'm going to interrupt you there. The same advisor wrote that, that, uh, that told Tim Walls he should go pheasant hunting without knowing how to work his, <laughs> his shotgun. Oh my God. Yeah, that's a funny, that's another story too, because I actually know how to hunt. My dad told me my first gun was a, 20, 20 gauge, but uh, actually it was a 410. Watching him trying to load that shotgun, I don't want to be anywhere near that field that oh, day. Hey, hey, Scott, at least he didn't invite Dick Cheney around, right. and they both would have got shot. I don't think he even <laughs> fired a shot. Wasn't the whole purpose of that for a photo op to get him shooting a gun? He didn't even shoot at a pheasant. Well, it kind of remind me of poor Kelly Loeffler when she was running. They, they bought 180 and take the tag off of it. <laughs> just walking down the field like, oh, at least take the tag off the shotgun. <laughs> well, she wanted to be able to bring it back to the store later. But see, but see, that's what happens. This is what makes President Trump. And there's a lot of other guys out there, too, and ladies that are running. Just be yourself. Go in there. Don't try to be someone you're not. Because when you do that, you're going to have to, you have, you're going to, have to memorize that. If you, if you have to memorize it, then it's not really you. It's not authentic. It's not genuine. And people are starting to see through that. And that's why a lot of folks are gravitating to, you know, real talk people that are running for office and that want to seek these seats. And that's, of course, the, the number one guy out there is that's tooting the horn is President Trump. So, um, but yeah, that's, that's, you know, Scott, that's pandering 101, 102. Um, it's actually helping us. So I want her to do more of that. <laughs> right. And I, I, I really do. Yes, I'm, I'm not kidding. It's the same way when Bill Clinton was on the trail. And he goes, well, you know, uh, you know, we didn't have, have uh, we had vetted them. They, they wouldn't have killed Lake and Ryland. He went there and told the truth. And so I actually tweeted that and everything. it went viral. So, yeah, we want more truth. So, yeah, keep being who you are. Right. Keep pandering because that's who you are. Keep, keep, keep going. It's actually helping us. It really, truly is, Scott. And, and that actually was a pretty good Clinton impersonation. We're, we're talking to Bruce Lavelle. Follow him on Twitter, <laughs> Bruce underscore Lavelle, former executive director of the National Diversity Coalition for Trump and a senior campaign advisor to former President Trump. Out on the campaign trail now, Bruce. Uh, Barack Obama is coming out. I'm sure uh, I'm sure Mich Michelle Obama will be out as well. Uh, they're, they're trying to pull out. They're trying to pull out the old guns to to uh, to lure yeah. African American voters to Kamala Harris, who who didn't even make it through the primary, who couldn't even get one percent of the primary vote. Yeah, well, you know, uh, Michelle's coming to Atlanta. I think tomorrow. I think she's got another book to sign or a book to sell. But number two, man, I saw Barack. I'm like, dude, give up them cigarettes, give up them cool Filter Kings or Newport. He's just smoking. He looks horrible, man. I mean, it's like he looks so frail and like skinny. I'm like, dude, stop smoking, stop doing something. And you wanted to come down and talk down to the brothers, and we ain't seen. And you live in where Martha's Vineyard? What? Come on, man. <laughs> you ain't been back to Chicago since, man. He lives in D.C. and he stays up at Martha's Vineyard, <laughs> smoking them cool filter kings, guys, <laughs> with, with, with an old E. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce Lavelle from the Scott Sancho. How's how's the Georgia race look? Uh, you're there. What's uh, I, I can't believe it's still listed uh, by by some pollsters as a toss up state. I, I know I know both no, I, some, I, yeah. both senators are Democrat, but I, I think that was because of poor senatorial campaigns more than anything. Yep. Um, yes, that's true. Yep. So so yep. I mean, what, what's what's happening in the state? What's the vibe? Well, you know, I. Well, well, I think we're up five points at least. Um, and one of the main things that's driving is the inflation. Um, Atlanta's become very expensive. And Scott, I'm going to tell you, I, I talked about this on the show yesterday. We have 80 plus thousand eviction notices on the docket of the city of Atlanta as we speak. And the other thing indicator pay attention to is the, the, the back payments on car loans uh, in the area and the average consumer credit card debt is six to eight thousand a household and so the wages haven't gone up you know inflation's gone way up of course you know cost of living and the atlantans especially you know in the, in the more you know or urban areas is even in suburban areas have a strong contrast to the trump era of four years and what we have now and so that's a you know that's just a, a regular apples to oranges comparison um in terms of what they could go back from the 
from a good record. And people are seeing that. So um, Georgia will be fine. Um, you know, obviously we want to win Pennsylvania, of course. And I think we're doing really well. Arizona, we're, we're killing it out there. Hopefully we can pull Kerry Lake over the uh, finish line with, with President Trump. Um, and, of course, you saw the, the race up there with Hogan in Maryland. And we'd love to get that Senate seat. And, of course, old Ted Cruz down in Texas. So yeah. there's a lot of, lot of moving parts around the, the country. But in terms of uh, Georgia, I think we'll be totally confident. You know, we got Lieutenant Governor Burt Jones. Uh, all our state constitutional officers are Republican. And to your point, yes, we do have two senators. But let me tell you, Ossoff is like MIA. You don't never see Rogers. <laughs> that guy right there, man, is like that dude. He, he don't he don't mess. He don't like messing with the left. He don't mess with nobody. He goes somewhere. He's kind of like Sanford Bishop, man. He's like he's elected official, but you don't even know it sometimes. <laughs> You, you ever uh, notice that? He don't show up for nothing. He don't show up for anything. Have you noticed? You keep a low profile, you can't get in trouble. Yeah, like Lucy Macbeth does. And, you know, Raphael and Warnock, he sticks his neck out, you know, because obviously he's the, still the pastor at Ebenezer Church downtown Atlanta, which that's hard to figure out with a, uh, a pro-choice, uh, okay, with abortions at, you yeah. know, late stages and calls it. But anyway, that's another story. Yeah, but it doesn't but, make I, sense. but to answer your question, I think we'll be fine, honestly, and I, I really mean that. Um, I always like to say, if I'm worried, then you need to worry. But I've been in Atlanta for many, many years. Got there in 88, and I'm third, fourth generation. So I have a pulse of the business community where the people agree or disagree, where they vote. But I think, um, you know, we're 34% black population in Atlanta. Excuse me, Georgia, which is one of the highest black populations in the country. But I think it's going to be a game changer. I just with black men. I just said black folks, period. You know, don't underestimate the black women, too, because, you know, they do have you know, uh, their mates, you know, and they, they will, you know, Hey, okay, we need to do this. So I think they're underestimating, uh, some of the black women that, especially that are a lot of like, business owners are going to vote, uh, Republican this time. And that's going to be a shocker. Well, and that's why there's a lot of desperation. I, I agree. Bruce you Lavelle, know. Bruce underscore Lavelle on Twitter here on the Scott Sand show. Uh, we're out of time, which is good for both of us, I think, because normally right about now, uh, as an Alabama Crimson Tide fan, I would give you a little grief over beating Georgia again, but but I can't say much after losing to Vanderbilt. I know the the scam. We're hoping we get past UT this weekend in Austin. Actually, I'll be there, so hopefully we'll 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 prevail there uh, on Saturday against the Longhorns. So yeah, if we don't then. That's, that's going to be done. a really good game. Yeah, and Alabama is going to yeah. get through Tennessee and and uh, and LSU as well. And up here, I mean, we still got Ohio State, Penn State that, that uh, Ohio State yeah. needs to win but that least, game. Yeah, but at least we didn't lose to Wake Forest. <laughs> yeah, well, we lost to Vanderbilt. <laughs> First, we'll talk to you soon. Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt. Oh, Vanderbilt. Okay. <laughs> See ya. All right. Bye. Thanks.